What is up, everybody? Welcome to our Afro D Academy Masterclass. This masterclass, of course, is with Fatih. He is our sex expert in any questions that you guys have in terms of sex, tantra, all of this type of stuff. He is an amazing coach. He's been doing this for a long time and overcome a lot of his own issues um, just through learning. And now he teaches other people. Um, I know that you have a bunch of material that we want to go through, Fatih. Um, However you want yeah. to start this out, introduce yourself to us. That would be awesome. All right, Andre, thanks for the um, opening. Well, thanks, Afrodi community and Farhan, especially for inviting me. Um, it's an honor for me to be here and delivering this um, masterclass. I just want to say one thing. I don't think I'm far ahead of all of you guys. Um, but I know one thing. I'm far ahead of myself 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Like I've like, moved a lot of distance, uh, like since I started developing myself. And part of the reason is that I was a very sick and weak child. Like all the boys in the neighborhood would make fun of me, my physical body. I was quite tall. I'm still quite tall, um, but very skinny and weak and had a lot of sicknesses when I was a child. So when I was 18 years old, I had to hack the medical system and start healing myself stop using antibiotics. And that's how my journey started. And then my sex life was horrible too. So I was like a one minute, two minute ejaculator. And although I'm a handsome guy, like I can approach some girls, I had the chances, but I would always mess it up because I had zero self-confidence. And when I started having my first relationships, they were ending up badly all the time. And yeah, one of the stories that, um, she like she was one of my first loves. I think I was at college, 20 years old, and she was not satisfied with me in bed for sure. And at some point, she was almost making fun of me. I know you're gay, you know something like that. And I was like trying not to be offended by it, but trying to act cool. But of course, it's hurting. And then she just broke up with me after a couple of weeks after that. And uh, this was before tantra, before my tantric evolution and starting something really serious about my sexual life and in a natural way. So I started practicing hardcore yoga and paying more attention to my fitness routine, my diet and whatnot, everything like tox detoxifying my body, like understanding and learning more about detox and meditation and sleep optimization and anti-aging and biohacking and everything. Like I'm like almost constantly researching and studying these subjects. So I'm not, I'm teaching and coaching on tantric sexuality, but I feel that there are a lot of things that we can take as supports. Aphrodite is an amazing support, for example. I've been using it and I love it. I love the taste too. So um, yeah, and I'm, I'm very happy with Farhan actually. I'm very happy with our friendship. And uh, yeah, dudes, let's, ah, let me finish that story. Um, so this girl after Tantra, after so many years, like she was single after two marriages, she was single. And after one marriage, I'm single. And then we just decided to meet and have sex. Like she was very ready to try it. And she was like, she still liked me, you know, like, and then now she's very, very happy. Like it's a completely different story. Like we are going into different experiences and it's like a couple of hours of lovemaking, like two, three hours, like interesting things, surprising, nice things for her. So Basically, the history reverse, and I have several stories like that. And um, yeah, the ultimate story is that I was a model, a, a fashion model in Japan, in Tokyo, and I was studying there, like as an amateur guy. And I met some fashion models, like Russian, Japanese, Belgian, Canadian, Czech. You know, like really beautiful woman. And I was very, very shy to approach them, you know, because I knew that I wouldn't satisfy them. It would be a disaster. It would be um, shame and you know like so I was cheating my pants basically but now I feel that I'm now a father and I have a lot of responsibilities but my inner teenager she just wants to go back to Tokyo and start modeling again and get these girls and fuck them well and you know make them happy and get one of them for marriage maybe why not maybe I should do that you know like so but I can do that I know that my life transformed completely after especially five years in Thailand staying on a tantric school yoga school on a tropical island interesting experience of course 
before and after that, I've been also doing other stuff that will support this journey. So today I'm here and happy to be here. Any questions or let me flow, Farhan, what you think? Or let's flow together. Yeah, does anyone have any questions out the gate for Fatih? Oh, I'm Margo, uh, Vin. Yeah, go ahead, Vin. Hey, so thank you for um, yeah, this masterclass. Um, I just want to say, like, so will this like also affect you in the gym? Like all the stuff you, you, which you will explain now, like, so will it affect you, you know, will this like make you stronger as well in the gym? Yeah, I can, but I'm lazy. I'm not really practicing. Like I'm a bad student, but I was in Kiev and I had a really good uh, fitness coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh, we were talking about Metallica and biohacking, like between sets, you know, like, so he was a really cool friend of mine, really super fit guy. And I was yeah. really developing with him, but I need some good coaching. And at the, at the moment, I'm not choosing to go in that direction, but very soon I'll start going into that direction. Like I just recently decided uh, about my plan. And, but I would say that, um, the techniques and methodologies of Tantra and Tao and plus yoga, like a combination of them can help you tremendously with your uh, fitness performance because you will have much more energy. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. In Turkey, for example, we have a culture of, um, it's, it's almost a culture, like if there's a very important match the next morning, um, nobody, nobody can have sex that night. And the reason for that is, is to protect that energy, right? To preserve that energy. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Especially, le especially le leg muscles. If you watch the movie Creed, where the Rocky Ball boy is now coaching a younger guy, a black guy, and, uh, and, and he has a lover and, like, and they are good friends. And like, just before an important match, they're staying in the hotel and um, Creed is looking at them and remember, legs. And, and Creed turns to his uh, girlfriend like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, if I have sex tonight, tomorrow morning in the match, my legs would be weak. So he doesn't want that. And she's like, of course, I understand you. I love you. Um, but the point is this. Um, it's a common practice of not having sex, therefore not ejaculating and losing your sperm before a big performance. But if you can stretch it to one week, that will be something even stronger. And there is a famous research by, the, by some chi Chinese scientists, which they tested the testosterone levels of some guys that haven't come for seven days. And their testosterone level was high. So what the NoFap guys, they just took this research based on just one research, they uh, started experimenting and start, stopped watching porn and stopped doing ejaculation, ejaculation style masturbation. I have to split masturbation into tantric masturbation and normal masturbation, okay? So I agree with the no porn aspect of um, no fab, but we do masturbation in Tantra, but in a certain way. So, and it's, it's like a solo practice, actually. I call it solo practice because um, practicing Tantra with a partner, like having sex with a partner is more challenging if you want to extend your penetration like if you want to last longer we're getting so horny right when there's we have a girlfriend or a woman like if she's sexy and juicy <laughs> it's quite difficult to hold the ejaculation like the more yeah. sexy the girl the shorter time of intercourse like almost there's like a ratio there so all of these things can be transformed by tantra you can last longer by not doing some crazy things or some very simple or dangerous hacks okay because there are these things out there these things are even written in some of the most famous Taoist sexual books, okay? And Montakchi is one of them. And he is a technique yeah. mm -hmm. that he teaches as million dollar points technique, which is by my master, it's just a five cents point technique. And uh, because it's also dangerous, it doesn't work. You lose your sperms because the sperm go back to urethra. I'm not talk, teaching you what the technique is, uh, but don't do it. Even the co-writer of that book, Michael Wynn, he decided to take it off and he just made a public announcement about it that people should not practice this technique. So in more complete natural and healthy ways, I'm teaching and coaching guys like yourself to um, last longer, improve your 
um, mental capacity and your physical strengths. And if you have chronic diseases, fight with them in a better way. If you have a weak immune system, a weak muscular system, whatever weakness you have, emotions, sexual power, libido, testosterone, whatever it is, if you do the economy of the sperms, if you regulate the ejaculation of your sperms, which all the Taoist masters in the past and the tantric masters in the past as well, they were um, very big on it. <laughs> they, they developed some firm formulas. And once you do that, you will start getting more success in whatever you want to do. All right? I'm moving away from your question, Vin. I'm, I'm aware of that. But let me tell you the last part of this, and then you will tell me if you are satisfied with the answer or not. Mm -hmm. So the ultimate part, ultimate success in Tantra makes you like you're in a god mode in a computer <laughs> game. <laughs> you know? You know, I think, because you laughed. That's true, yeah. Right? Yeah, in okay. some, uh, like, shooting uh, computer games, if you're a computer game geek like me, like, you, you can write the cheat. I never wrote this cheat, but other dudes were playing like this, and they become gods. Nobody can kill them, you know? No yeah. challenge or problem can knock them out. If you don't ejaculate for 40 days or 50 days or even 30 days, maybe, you will become like playing your life game in a god mode. Nothing can beat you. The worst trouble can come up. The worst disease can come up. The worst emotional threat, like your wife is messing your life. Your child is making you crazy or I don't know. You can be like completely successful and happy and balanced. Like even the most, if you are doing your homework well in Tantra. So this is one of the most important benefit of Tantra for guys, especially that I love to share. It's not just about having better sex partners and having better sexual life. Of course, it's coming there as well. But they go hand in hand. They go together. All right. So are you satisfied with the answer? Uh, definitely. OK. Thank you. You're welcome, Vin. One thing, Fatih. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at it from the perspective of, of a viewer, right? Like one of our students. <laughs> the concept of sperm retention is itself very novel to most guys because our society is very much a you know come come all over her face type society with pornography yeah. and whatnot so mm -hmm. i want you to take a step back because the way you coached me from the very beginning you know years more than a year ago i was obviously aware of no fap and all of this stuff obviously i know the science of it blah 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 but the historical aspects, to me personally, history is way more important than science because science changes like this, but history doesn't change, right? So if like, you know, you told me about, for example, Brahmacharya, this, this, this notion of Brahmacharya and how uh, those, those, those yogis in India, how they preserved their sperm and became geniuses and whatnot. So like that type of thousands and thousands of years of history to me, is way stronger than some paper from some scientist today. Like who gives a fuck? Like he's going to change yeah. his mind yeah. in a week. Like, you know, but, but the thousands of years of history is strong. Like it's so solid, right? It's like, it's like almost like evolution. So talk a little bit, like take a step back. And, and, and by the way, to all of you guys, if you, you know, after this masterclass, you're probably gonna have a million more questions. Um, so Fatih has made an entire course for the Afro D library. I don't know how many of you are aware of the Afro D library, but he's made the whole thing like beginning to end everything you need to know. Um, so if you don't know what the Afro D library is, hit me up later and, and I'll tell you and then you know, you can have that course as well. But today, Fatih, take a step back and someone who has no idea about like sperm retention, keep your sperm. Because most guys, you know, they're coming three times a day if they're younger and maybe three times a week if they're older. So what is this keeping the sperm life force stuff? Do you want a normal answer or a geeky answer? <laughs> <laughs> your answer. Yeah, okay. Both. Well... Okay, let me try to start with the normal answer. It's because of almost, okay, it's still a geeky a little bit. Um, 
it's almost like a conspiracy that we boys are taught to masturbate as often as we can and that's a sign of alpha male right but that's bullshit because the alpha male in the cave age he was the one who would control his ejaculation and boost like crazy with the sperm inside his body and go kill that fucking lion and bring meat to the home uh yeah sometimes my english can be off a little bit but um Imagine our great, great, great grandfathers, you know, like how many times they were ejaculating, maybe 10, 15 times per year. And that's because they're married and their wife is pregnant all the time and she's having her periods. So two days before, two days after period, you cannot have sex. If she's, uh, just, give, she's just given birth, you cannot have sex. If she's pregnant, you cannot have sex. Um, there are some, I don't know, spiritual holidays that's, I don't know, there are thousands of reasons then that guy is not ejaculating off, and he's much more masculine. We guys, we're losing it all the time like crazy because we think this is a good thing. And that's what the porn industry is doing to us. I'm not against porn. Like I, I sometimes watch porn. It's funny. It's interesting. It's sexy sometimes. But I'm not addicted to porn because I know porn is just 5% of what you can achieve by sex. Just 5%. There's a world be, be, beyond it, you know? Like, and, but you need to be curious about life and, you know, like what's like, you need to be questioning reality a little bit, you know, like question what's given to you. Oh, they give me porn. Let me watch porn. And okay. You know, I really like Gonzalo, Ma Gonzalo's masterclass, by the way, he's a very cool guy. And there he, he awakened some spiritual ideas in me because um, like the, the Tibetans, they call the sperm bodhicitta, right? And bodhicitta means also the Buddha mind. And what's the Buddha mind? Um, you're not reactive. You're not creating new samskaras, which are like um, fruits of action that will come back to you and bite your ass. Like um, you have more compassion. You have more consciousness. Like you can meditate or you can be healthy and you can live a long life. You know, like there are crazy yogi masters that they say, oh, this dude lived 2,000 years and then he decided to leave his body, you know? Of course, for the science, Western mind, these things are, oh, this is just a myth. These are just lies or this is just a bunch of bullshit. And, and maybe they are right. I mean, so that's why I'm very skeptical. But the point is this, I'm encouraging everyone who is listening to me or reading my book or taking coaching from me to try and experiment with this thing. Luckily, many guys, they experimented with no fat and they know how it feels to not masturbate and don't, therefore don't come for 20 days, 30 days, or 40 days, or maybe more. Some guys are doing crazy long periods, but that's kind of suppressing the energy. I don't like it. I like to have masturbation. I like to have sex. And yeah, once in a while, I can have an accident or I can decide to have ejaculation or she's just sexy and that just happens or I want to have a child like many different reasons can make me come. But the point is I regulate my ejaculation. I conserve my energy and the average is important. You know, like if I ejaculate every day, I'm fucked. But if I don't ejaculate for seven days or 10 days, I start feeling a little bit stronger. Okay. And if I don't do it for 30, 40, 50 days, I become like a superhero. And that's just beginning, you know, like in the 90 days. And if you keep on, there's nothing that you cannot do in life. God knows, I'm telling you, it's serious. Is that an answer to your question? There are some questions coming. I can take any questions, but... Hello? Somebody should... Yeah. Yeah, hi there. Um, so I just wanted to... Uh, I just wanted you to elaborate on this one sort of um, notion when it comes to tantric sex where it's like uh, ejaculate up the spine i have no i've heard this term and i have no idea what that means like ejaculate up the spine would you would you care to elaborate or is this like a, it's not a real thing well of course there's a metaphor there like you don't <laughs> take your complete sperm and with the semen around it and just Brush that thing up to your spine. It goes up somewhere. Like, it's 
almost like a metaphor because you go through, your body starts going through a kind of um, alchemical process where um, the materials start change, changing form. Like, for example, did you know that in our body, uh, everybody says, okay, our body is 70% water, 70% water. Okay, cool. But in what form is seven? Is it all like liquid form? Is it like we are like, then we, we should be like, we cannot even walk, you know, like we could just make one, two steps and fall down. That water is jelly in gel form in, within the cells, outside of the cells. So our sperm, our semen can also be transformed. There's a system in our body called the lymph system or the lymphomat lymphomatic lymph system, I think. Okay, so the lymph system is almost mysterious. The medical science still don't exactly know what this works for, what's it's, why is it there, why is it working, like how is it doing things. For example, if you have an injury, like you cut yourself or something, the lymph system will start sending special liquids with hormones and whatnot into that part. So, and it's also carrying toxins as we know. So, so here's the thing, for example, if you wanna be successful in these kind of things, one of the first things you need to do is to detox your body really well. Like, um, and that's a complete science and art in itself. I don't even teach it in my video course because it's really something to be taken very seriously. And uh, that needs to be one-on-one -on -one in my understanding. That's the part that exactly has to be one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I can teach some things, but your detoxing is very important. And what I mean is, is if I can just talk one hour on this, but basically if you are clean enough, your lymph system starts taking your sperm and starts sending its energy, first of all, the energy, the energy of the sperm. There's an energy of the sperm. Have you seen a sperms under microscope? Their tails are moving like crazy. So millions of them create an ama amazing energy. First of all, uh, that energy explodes when you have uh, ejaculation. Poof, like poof, you, you explode this energy into your woman or into your hand or you know, like wherever it is. So education up the spine is explode that energy up to your spine, okay? But not the material of it. The sperms will go back to your testicle and start getting recycled. Their material is very precious for the body. The body is saying, okay, I created this limousine for you. You're not using it. I'm going to just dismantle it and you start using it for something else because the body gives its best resources and minerals and whatnot into the sperm cells. If you're not using it, that's very resourceful, you know, because why is it so precious? Because it's going to give life to another human being. That's giving your best to the sperm and you create billions of them, right? So if you keep the economy of this shit, your body will transform because you're using this life force energy. So this is the Brahma Acharya Farha. Brahma Acharya, Brahma is the divine force that is in you because you can create a life by uh educating into a woman fertilizing her egg this is your creative part she her creative part is taking care of the baby growing her giving birth like motherhood is a completely different story we just do one thing and that's it so you have one shot as eminem says you know like and that one shot you need to have the best of your sperm so there are even in the yoga or in native american cultures the father should purify his body and get stronger and use some uh, frog poison to detox his body, you know, all of that thing to develop the best child in this world. Like there are other factors as well. But if you are, I don't know, like smoking cigarettes every day, eating junk food every day, and then you fertilize an egg, that boy or girl will not be so healthy. I mean, of course, there are some people who have more healthy uh, microbiome and DNA. So they have less trouble with these things, but they have an overconfidence and then they can mess up. I know a girlfriend of mine, ex-girlfriend of mine, we would always fight because I was trying to be always pure and don't eat food from microwave oven. And then she was like, I was, I was just a bunch of bullshit, you know, like she didn't believe in, it was just too much woohoo for her. And we break up and she got pregnant from a man and her child has a tumor here, like this big. So life is like this, you know, like we, we need to get conscious and this is the ultimate goal in Tantra, right? Tantra is all about getting more conscious and sex is just one path of it. Music is Tantra, dancing is Tantra. There are tons of things uh, from diet to herbs, you know, like 
There are tons of books about these other aspects of Tantra. Sexuality is just five, ten percent of it. Yoga, asanas, breath work, meditation, all of these are part of Tantra because they make you more conscious. All right. That answers your question. Can you hear me, guys? I'm not hearing I can hear you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fatih, I have a question. Go ahead. Mine's yes. more of a practical nature. Uh, so I'm not circumcised, so I'm more sensitive. Uh, I've heard of techniques like sharpening the knife. Uh, what do you recommend for guys like us that are more sensitive? Because I'm not circumcised. so Sharpening the knife is a good method. one. Yeah, sharpening the knife is a good one. Sharpening the knife is definitely a good one. You got to take care of your nervous system too. You got to be able to relax as well. Like, so you can take all the energy, all the pleasure, and still um, the prostate will not trigger the ejaculation because you can relax that part of your body very well. And that will only come if you balance the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. All right. Breath work can help a lot with that too. But this, I'm talking about your relaxation and your mindset, okay? Also, what I told you just before, your, um, you need to be able to move the energy up in your body, back and up, at least hold it where it is. If you have no control over your energy, especially when it is aroused, it's going to be much more difficult. Um, of course, the penis and the uh, sensitivity of your penis is also important. So um, sharpening the knife is good. Um, don't ever use things like um, rice pieces or something like that. There are some crazy things that may hurt your penis a little bit and make it desensitized. I don't recommend that. What is sharpening the knife? Sharpening the knife is a Taoist technique, so, um, that is um, it's taught by Mantak Chia. So you put some oil on your lingam, on your penis, okay, and you just make a ring around your penis with your fingers like this. And then you just 50 times do it like this from the root of your penis to the gland penis, 50 times, okay? And then hold it to the right and do it 50 times like that and hold it to the left and do it 50 times like that. And then um, to the up and when you lose your erection towards down as well. So 200 times and you do it every day and then this is a lot of benefits. It's also very good for your um, erectile dysfunction because it's kind of massage for your lingam, for your penis. Um, you can have some, um, like any kind of massage on your penis is good. It doesn't have to be like that sharpening the knife kind of uh, sexual kung fu kind of thing. It could be, you can go to a woman who can do very good uh, erotic massage, tantric massage, very rare to find, but if you can try, and, and tell her that, by the way, like, I don't want a happy end. I don't want to come in the end. I don't want to ejaculate. And if she's tantric, she will understand and respect that. And then this can also help. Um, prostate massage can help as well. And there are many things, like you can take some herbs. I don't want to go too much into this, but there are many things that you can do. Sharpening the knife is definitely a very good one of them. You can also do um do contrast showers like hot and cold and hot and cold cold water will help you very much Wim Hof methodology will help you very much ice baths your tolerance will increase so you can take control of everything in a better way so these are things that i'm coaching guys into like we create personal programs like okay 20 minutes every day um ice bath and then you do 200 times of um, sharpening the knife not every day the other day you do testicle massage or like from person to person it changes and I would encourage you um, I'm sorry now I see Sat but who was the name of the person who asked the question it's uh, me uh, Elias Elias, Elias. Elias. Um, oh my god I forgot so yeah, you can do some um, private gym kind of technique too, like to lift your penis many times. 
So that will give you a lot of control over your penis. Like you lift your penis like this. I'm doing it fast, but we need to do it 15 times like this. And then the second time, lift it up, like give a break, half a minute, one minute. And then second time, hold it up. That muscle that lifts your penis, right? In, the, in front of your body, just above your penis. You use it to lift your penis up and keep it as long as you can. One minute, two minutes, three minutes, and try to increase this time period. And on the third time, just do pumps like that as fast as you can. And as many of them as you can, 50 times, 80 times, 100 times. These kind of practices will help you control your uh, everything there because your attention goes there, those muscles get strong. And just when you're about to come, you can squeeze that muscle and stop the ejaculation. Not always. If it's strong enough, yes. So you need to combine it with some other techniques, perhaps. But if you are strong enough, maybe you don't need. That's yeah. very good. Does anyone else have any other questions for Fatih? All right, uh, let's go for, okay, let's, let's uh, pose the questions for a while. Sorry, please, guys, hold your horses. Um, <laughs> are you ready to give the metronome sound? Oh, Andre? yeah. Yeah, let's do uh, it. Just, just hold it for a minute. Let me explain, guys, what is this. Um, we're just going to, all right, I'm going to teach you one technique that involves counting of the breath. And in yoga, it's quite a popular kind of techniques. Uh, it's called box breathing. Maybe some of you guys know it's quite famous. Um, the Navy SEALs practice this technique. And this keeps them um, relaxed under stress. For example, they're in a battle situation or some stressful situation. They do this breathing and they can relax because this breath relaxes your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous system is um, more like action, fight or flight. And the parasympathetic is the one that suits, relaxes you, calms you down. So in sex, you need this very much because in sex, we are usually on the sympathetic, like fight or flight, adrenaline rushes. And then if you're in this mood constantly or primordially, it's going to trigger ejaculation very easy. But if you can relax at the same time, as much as you can, while you're um, fucking her, like, as strong as you can, as fast as you can. Of course, there are ways to reduce that as well. If you, if you feel like you come to a point of no return very quick, I didn't explain these concepts yet, but uh, if you're about to come, you can just relax, slow down, and breathe in this way. It will relax you even more. So what is this breath? Um, we inhale up to the count of four. We hold the breath up to the count of four. We exhale up to the count of four, and then we hold the breath again up to the count of four. So I, I'll do it just once now. Or Andre, can you give me the sound? Thanks. I heard only one time. Really? I, I need to hear it like this, like this. Mm -hmm. All right, let me mess with it. Okay, meanwhile, I'm doing it with my microphone. So. Good. So I'm going to start by inhaling and counting for, okay? So I did two rounds, and if I keep doing this for a while, I will relax even more, okay? So now we're gonna do this all together. Just please make sure that you're sitting as straight as possible, or maybe you can be lying down, it's okay, but make sure you have no tension in your belly area. So you can have a, a deep belly breathing, okay? So if you have a belt that's tensing your uh, belly, relax it, change your posture maybe if you want. So let's go. So we're gonna start with inhaling. Exhaling, hold, 
Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Last time, inhale. Exhale. Hold. So finish it in your own time if you are behind us. So this technique, you can even do it, for example, you, you know that you have a stressful meeting with your boss or something. You know, like just go to toilets or sit on your office chair and just do this for a while. So just do it for a while, like two rounds, four rounds, longer if you want, if you have time. So you will be much more centered and relaxed, or you're going to have an important conversation with your wife that you know that she can drive you crazy, or you're in sex and you, you know that you're about to come, you just need to relax a little bit so that you can last longer. Very easy hack, okay? And there's even another technique called four, seven, eight breath. And it's even a little bit better during sex because in that one, you can take more oxygen to your blood. By the way, carbon dioxide is not bad. Carbon dioxide has a function too. So when you do this, any kind of Wim Hof method, for example, you do, you have a lot of oxygen in your blood. And then you hold it as long as, long as you can. So when you hold your breath, what happens is your oxygen and carbon dioxide levels start getting equal. And what carbon dioxide does is it sends the oxygen to your cells. So if you have a lot of oxygen in your blood, but not enough carbon dioxide, that's the problem. So if you keep hyperventilating all the time and don't hold your breath, you can go into all kinds of crazy, crazy things. And there are some people who do that, and I don't really recommend that. Even the Wim Hof method is not supposed to be done every day. All right? So, okay, let's not go in too much into the science of it. Um, but basically, when you hold your breath or when you, okay, like you can say, Fatih, this is just too much complicated. You know, like you just messed my mind right now. What shall I fucking do with my breath during sex? At least do this. Exhale slowly, okay? So you can be inhaling very fast. Exhale slower. If you can, two times slower. So that's the four, seven, eight breath. You hold your breath for seven. And on the void retention, it doesn't matter. You can take a breath right after your exhalation. So that's good. If you need more oxygen, that's good in sex. Okay. So this is just very few simple things and tricks that you can do with your breath during sex. So holding your breath can work as well. Because when you hold your breath, you control your whole nervous system, your whole body. You can still keep back moving back and forth. You can still tilt your pelvis into her, but you can hold your breath. And then you exhale fully, and then you still keep your breath for a while more. And then see the effect. But don't go crazy. Don't explode your skull or something like that. Know your limits. Don't push yourself too hard with this. Okay? It can be harmful. So, but the best thing is to Take uh, 20, 30 minutes every day, maybe even shorter, and practice thing. Press, practice these things. Practice the muscle contractions, practice, practice the sexual muscles, and uh, the breath work. There are even more crazy techniques, like sublimation techniques, where you shoot the energy up your spine. Not your ejaculation, but your energy of your sperm, of your sexual energy. You, you flush it, not during sex. You take it completely different time during your day. You do it standing. There's a special technique. And this kind of technique flushes the energy, flushes the energy, flushes. You do it hundreds of times, thousands of times, like a karate, karate kid, you know? And you will say, what the fuck? Why this coach is telling me these things? Like, they don't make sense. You know, like, why am I taking off my jacket and putting it on, putting it on again? Why am I um, brushing this car all the time or painting this fence all the time? And he wants me to paint to another color. Is he crazy? But they all make sense when you combine these techniques. So it's kind of sexual kung fu in a way. Very good. All right. So there are a couple of questions in chat. Uh, I just want to highlight and we can answer these like real quick, depending on. Okay. Uh, I'll so, try to be real quick. 
<laughs> okay. So Nate asks, uh, how often do you ejaculate per year? Uh, okay. doesn't matter. I'm ejaculating 10 times less than I was when I was 25. But on average, I am around the number of my age per day. Like I'm 42 years old and my goal is to keep an average of 42, every 42 years, once ejaculation. So how many times it makes? Makes six, seven, eight times per year, but I do more than that. I will admit that I will do more than that. So I'm still uh, trying to beat myself. So it's like, but I enjoy it. It's not boring. It's not like some stupid discipline. So next question. Very good. Um, Yael asks, pelvic exercise helps too. And I think he was, he was talking about in terms of the prostate and all when we were talking about sharpening the knife and such. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, pelvic exercise means what? Like there are many different types of pelvic exercises. If you mean the PC muscle or Kegels for men, yes, it does help if you do it efficiently. Like, you know, you need to know how you're doing it and you need to have a regularity. Don't overdo it as well. Recover your muscle and and also understand the energetic aspects of it. It's called in yoga, Mula Bandha, this pelvic floor lifting technique. And there's even a book, like 300 pages book written about it, especially for women, right? Okay, I admit it's more important for women, but for us, it's also quite important. Very good. Um, Atul had asked, um, what sort of oil can we use for a massage? Perfect question, perfect. There are not so many guys who are into sensuality, okay? So one of the things you need to learn as a tantric man is just come out of this warrior shield thing, you know, like, oh, I'm going to the gym every day, I'm punching, like, okay, that's cool too. Muscles are cool. And your muscles will make you stronger, you will last longer if you're more fit, if your cardio levels are over the roof, you're gonna last longer. All of these things will help you tremendously with your sexual life, okay? Um, if you are also leaving, having a healthy diet, not toxifying yourself with strange chemicals. Um, just be careful all that, you know, like, um, so yeah, they will have, what was the question? Where, where did you come from? What sort of oil is recommended for the Yeah, massage? the sensuality, the sensuality aspect. So, um, because Tantra is the cult of the feminine. So we need to understand how it feels to be a woman. And we need to connect with our inner feminine as well. Like one of the most uh, favorite styles of orgasmic, orgasmic in Tantra is feminine type of orgasm. Okay, after this question, Andre, I wanna go over the slides a little bit, okay? Sounds good. Um, yeah. All right. So, but before that, uh, I want you to jump to the second part. And because the first part, I already talked quite a lot about it. Um, so I think you still have I, to, you still have to tell them this type the, of oil. oil. Yeah. That would be her hemp oil, ideally, which I recommended you as well, or coconut oil, but grape seed oil or almond oil is, are very good as well. Like, um, yeah, but basically even olive oil can do, you know, like if you don't have any oil, just have olive oil, like whatever's in your kitchen. Very good. Without right. oil. Not a good idea. <laughs> okay, so we have the... Uh, oh, are you answering more questions? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Can you just jump, jump like some 10, 15 slides more and go to the second part? Yes. Second two. What's the, uh, the topic that you want me to go to on there? Because, oh, yeah. Part two, sperm economics, become a beast. Yeah, let me know if this one is also, the right one. Yeah, I'll tell you exact uh, exact slide. Um, orgasm versus ejaculation, number twenty four. Because most of these things we touched upon shortly. All right. Yeah, this one. There you are. So, thank you very much. So, two different parts of the brain run ejaculation orgasm and. Uh, like sometimes we ejaculate without orgasm, right? Like it, it sometimes happens to me during sleep. I wake up the wet dream and I had no pleasure, but there was ejaculation. 
So the opposite is also possible. And actually in Tantra, there are two main steps to learn how to be a multi-orgasmic lover or tantric man. Retention is one of them, like holding your sperm and knowing where your point of no return is, which, will, which I will come in a minute. And also subliming the energy, like moving it upwards. You need to do something with that energy. Because if you don't, it's like a balloon. It's going to fill in with a lot of energy, a lot of libido. And a small thing, like a needle, will make it burst. So you need to take that energy from your sexual balloon and move it to upper centers, like to your belly area, for example, where you feel more um, willpower, you feel more uh, courage, more discipline, more um, like, and even you can have an orgasm on these chakras, you know, your energy centers. And you, if you bring it to your heart, you will feel like, you're loving everyone. You're loving the universe. If you move even higher, you will have amazing inspiration and poetry is flowing, you know, like you love music and then whatnot, you know, like crazy ideas, very intelligent ideas and connecting with spirituality as well as coming from the highest chakra. So all of these things are important. So when you do that, you're using that sperm for something. I'm not telling you to just keep your sperm like a crazy maniac, like uh, that. Oh, do I have enough money in my bank? Do I have enough money in my bank? No, use it. Invest in something. So here's the pleasure curve. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah, this one, this, this slide I was talking about. So let's come to this one. Thanks. So like, like when we start having a sexual experience over the time, like after five, 10 minutes, our pleasures really, really increases, right? And there's a kind of point of no return. And when we pass that point, we can't come back, meaning that we ejaculate, there's spasm of the prostate, and the uh, semen comes out and that's it. You know, like most guys, we need to rest a little bit, minimum five, 10 minutes to be able to have an erection again. In Tantra, we, and this is what I call a masculine orgasm, the blue line, all right? So it's like jumping over the cliff and falling, like free falling. And the feminine orgasm is like waves, like a valley orgasm. So when you come to, let's say at 10, you come, you ejaculate, eight or nine, you stop and you chill out a little bit and you go down to seven or six. When you're eight or nine again, come back to seven or six. And the next time you get better, you stop only at nine and then you come down only at seven. You know, you kind of start controlling this zone and you stay in the zone, in the pleasure zone for 40 minutes, for 50 minutes, for one hour, as long as you have vitality, you know, because now the problem comes, your battery is running out because you can go as much as you have battery, right? So you don't finish sex because you just jumped over the cliff. And this is like a new idea for sexuality. You know, like you need to change your mindset for it. And in my book, I talk about many things and many examples and giving you even some exercises to understand this new mindset. <clears throat> so let's move on to the next slide. So the, the idea is about um, having like um, six, seven, or eight, uh, 80%, 70% of pleasure and staying in this valley, okay? We can move on to the next slide. Um, so, and instead of 10 seconds of 100% pleasure, you start enjoying 70, 80%, even 90% of pleasure for a much longer time, like for minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, or you can even, when you get excelled at it, you can move up to 95%. And the good news is, the, keep, the, the more you keep doing it, your brain will say, you don't give me orgasm, I'm going to get my orgasm. And how does he does it? Our brain? He raises the point of no return. So you can have even more pleasure, but of course, your relaxation is there, your lymph channels are there supporting the procedure. And then... You cannot come and still have the same amount of pleasure, okay? And then you can have orgasms without ejaculation. And these orgasms are not necessarily the same style of orgasm, same intensity or same uh, like direction of energy. Like it's, it's like your body starts shaking. You go like crazy, like an animal. You start screaming all around. You're, you start shaking your head. You start, I don't know, like just completely losing your mind and just, falling down, you know, like, and laying down for meditation, like all kind of mystical experiences can happen too. Or you start um, shaking. I just said that, I think. 
or you, you can have brain orgasm. When you have a brain orgasm, it's like all the ideas in your brain are exploding and you can become a genius about one idea for one second or 10 seconds, you know, like it could be very many different experiences. If it could be a core orgasm, for example, or it could be a psychological orgasm too. It's very interesting. One of the guys that I met recently, he was like, hey man, I, I don't really have a, like a premature ejaculation problem. You know, like I may come all the girls that I have sex with, he said to me. I said, okay, that's cool. Like some guys can do it from birth. Like I call them naturals. Some guys can do some of the things that I'm teaching already. And he added, he said, I take pleasure from her orgasm. And I'm like, okay, that's familiar. I also have it sometimes. And in yoga, we call it a Manipura orgasm, a third chakra orgasm. You have so much willpower that you completely decided not to come and you make her come. It's a kind of Chinese way. Okay. So, but I'm not really recommending because it can boost your ego too much. So it can be a lot of, uh, that could be one of the pitfalls in Tantra, you know, like, because when you're successful in Tantra, then you have some spiritual tests coming to you. So you got to be keeping your humbleness, keep opening your heart, um, keep your meditations and spirituality. So let's move on to the next slide. Is it tantric masturbation? Yeah, let's, let's stay here. Uh, let's come out. Let's come back to camera. Like, yeah. let's stop here. Let's keep this slide. Maybe we'll come back. Maybe not. So any other questions? We do have a few chat ones. Um, so Ozzy asks how to control pre-ejaculation during sex. Um, Ozzy, I need to understand what you mean. So I think they probably mean um, how to prevent ejaculating before, you know, I guess actually achieving pleasure with the women sharing that. Uh, so their problem um, is he's... coming too quick. Okay. Coming too quick and without pleasure. Do I understand? Yeah. So this is the thing. He needs to answer this question. That's why I prefer talking to the person who's asking the question. Okay. Yeah. Ozzy, if you want but to come if... back on. Then, uh, if free. not, if that's not cool, he can answer by chatting, by chat. Okay. I, I'm not going to force him to come to camera. <laughs> sure. Or the mic to take the mic. So RI asks how to masturbate without ejaculation. That's another question. Yeah, these are not very complete question. <laughs> um, okay, let me take the first question then. Um, so. If that's the case, if I understand you correctly, you are having an ejaculation and you're not having any orgasm at all. First of all, I strongly encourage you to go and check the situation with your doctor, okay? This I don't can be think a medical... that's it. No, 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 that's not it, no. Okay, so... Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me uh, clarify. So he says, how to control pre-ejaculation during sex. That's all he said. So now, you no tell assumptions. me from all your experience, what does he mean? Because he's not, he's not, it's okay. He doesn't have to tell us like the details, but you know, it, it's hard sometimes to, for people to be expressive in these situations because it's very sensitive information. So that's okay. I, I'm very aware of that. So uh, what, would, what do you, what do you assume he's asking? Um, what, what I, what I believe he's saying is uh, like how to not come so fast, literally. That's it. Simple question. Okay. That could, be, that could be a question, but this question I felt in a different way, Farhan. And that's something, because I had the experience of this thing where um, I'm ejaculating so many times, like I ejaculated three times yesterday, I ejaculated two times today or something like that. And I ejaculate one more time and I ejaculate without any pleasure at all. Just come a little bit of sperm, okay? That's and a that's great question too. That's yeah. great. I mean, if yeah. that's the case, that's the, if that's the case, uh, it's just too much. Like you don't have enough energy to feel anything. Okay. So when you feel something, you feel the energy as well. Okay. So if there's not some women, look, some women have amazing energy. Okay. Like they are like, she's not just woman. She's like three women or something. <laughs> she has crazy energy. Right. And then when you have sex with her, like it's much difficult to, keep your articulation because she's like a, a huge magnet in front of you pulling your sperms out of your penis. You know, like, Oh, what did you do? I'm like, how did you do that? You know, like just goes away, you know? So, and some women are not like that. And it's easy to control your uh, sperm with them. 
So, but also, if you don't have this energy, you don't feel orgasm because your own energy is very important. So in this situation, I encourage you to follow, for example, don't come for three days and see what's happening. If you're already, your frequency of ejaculation is already three days, move on to seven days. If it's already seven days, try 20 days. If it's already 20 days, try 40 days. So double or triple your uh, period of non-ejaculation period, whatever it is. If it's one day, make it three days. So, and see if there's a difference. If it's, there, there's no difference, five times though, like make it five times more, 10 times more and see what's changing. But if it's the first thing that you think, then why am I coming so fast? You're too sensitive. You don't have any control over your energy or your muscles or your nerves or over your mind. Something is happening through you, with you, but you have almost no control because you are not conscious enough, okay? So one of the things is, for example, when we do the Kegel exercise, we understand, oh, there are some muscles down there. And if I do this, this happens, you know, like and you create these neural connections between your brain and your muscles. And then those muscles are not a city in China. They make sense to you, you understand them, okay? Or your energy or your point of no return. So I really encourage you guys, okay, let's talk, talk about the tantric masturbation now. Uh, Andre, you can go back to the slides. Um, you can really take some time every day and do what I call a tantric masturbation, okay? This is something that's very natural to us and we can do it. We have been doing it, but just maybe in a different way. <laughs> or you're just gonna learn a new technique. like. You just, first of all, the first rule is relax, okay? Create some time and place in your personal life, a beautiful environment, okay? Ideally, if you don't have it in your life where you can spend half an hour every day where nobody will disturb you, you can lock the door or like whatever it is, like nobody will disturb you to turn your phone off, okay? And you just pleasure yourself without any shame and guilt. If shame and guilt comes, just meditate. Just observe those thoughts. Okay, they are coming. Emotions can get triggered. Maybe you remember some of your ex-lover. Maybe your heart is broken. Let them come. It's beautiful. Be vulnerable. Let the emotions come up. But don't rush the masturbation. Most of us, especially if you're, if you, if you're coming from a suppressed culture, like myself in Turkey, um, sex is a taboo, right? Everybody's doing it under the blanket. So what's happening? Your masturbation is a big no, no, no. So where do, we, where do, you, do, it, do, you, do you do it? Like uh, in the bathroom, in the shower, in the toilet, right? Stress and oh, my mother can come any second. Oh, what's going to happen? You no, know? like shame and guilt all around. It. Maybe somebody shamed you, it's even worse. So in Tantra, we also um, unfold these things, our traumas that happened to us when we were a teenager or a child. Okay, we just start healing ourselves, healing our mind, uh, releasing the traumas. And this tantric masturbation can be a space for that too. Sex can be a space for that too. Sometimes in sex, I just start crying. Tears come from my eyes. Sometimes in solo practice too. You know, like it's so good that I have so much pleasure, so much beautiful feelings that I cry. Like it opens my heart. Women are more prone to it. I see many women that start crying because they're orgasmic in a very beautiful way. Uh, we can also have it too. So we have to give this right to ourselves. You know, like we are adults. We don't have to lock ourselves in the, in the shower. To do it in the bedroom, lay down, relax, put on some nice oil, okay? Don't do it quickly. Make a fresh start. You deserve it. Next slide. So, yeah. Most importantly, be, be aware of your pleasure level, okay? So this is the key. Just remember that uh, graphic that I just showed you, the point of no return, okay? Try to understand where is your point of no return? Where do you come? Where do you ejaculate? And stop or slow down or relax just before that. Take a breath. Big breath. And then oh, you can sigh. You can voice. You can do some voicing. Voicing is very good too. So I'll do it a couple of times. Ah, oh, you can feel the lower vibrations in your body, your belly, your testicles, you know, like 
if it's like low, low frequency, or if there's some oo or o in it, it, it will vibrate with your lower parts of your torso. Oh. If you do it with ah, it will open your heart. Oh. So I don't want to go into all the vowels here, but voicing, breathing, holding your breath, doing the square breathing, like four, 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 or four, seven, eight breath. I call it the super sex breath. Or you can just, just simply exhale slower than how you inhaled. Hold your breath for a while if you can. Just relax, slow down, okay? And then don't come. <laughs> this is the goal. Don't ejaculate. And you keep doing it. Just walk away. Yeah, sounds crazy, I know. But this practice will be your game changer. This is the way to cheat the game and enter the God mode into your game, okay? So, yeah, next slide. Of course, there could be some questions. Oh, if I don't come, if I have sex and don't come, I have crazy pain in my testicles, right, brother? That happens. And that's called blue ball syndrome. And in Tantra, there's a remedy for that this uh, wonderful sublimation technique coming from Kundalini Yoga. You do it 10 to 20 times uh, or 20 to 20 minutes. One, one of them is taking almost 45 seconds or 40 seconds. So um, that's a very good technique to resolve this issue. You do it like this and then your pain is gone if you are good enough, but it's not very difficult to learn really. Like I teach it on the first day or the first week with my clients. So, but if you on the other hand, you cannot feel that the hardness is there, you lose your erection, then maybe you need to boost your libido. Maybe you need to do some special training for your testosterone levels. Take some Afro D or double it, or I don't know, take some other supplement. Maybe your vitamin D is missing, you know, like so it's, a, it's a whole, there could be a whole range of different reasons, but it's a sign that you can boost your libido more, basically, you know. Or you need to massage your body a little bit. You need to go to massage, go to sauna, take some yoga classes, do some pilates or stretching, you know. Uh, do squats, work on your leg muscles. You know, like there are many different ways. Lift heavier weights maybe. When you lose your hardness or erection during the solo practice, just take five minutes to test, massage the testicles. This is the Taoist technique, okay? Coming from Tao. You just take your, okay, let's come back to camera, Andre. So you, this is your bowl, okay? Like it's a little bit big, but you just hold, hold both of them and you just pull them from your body like this. You, you're not going to hurt yourself. You need to be careful. Just pull them out, okay? Just hold it very tight in the part where the, it's, they are connected to your body and also close your hands with this, with, the, with your, uh, close it with the rest of your fingers and just pull it out. And then the second technique, just tap them like this take one of them and tap for a minute and then take the other one and tap for a minute. And then this is a second uh, Taoist massage for the testicles. And the third one is you again, take one of them and put it uh, between your two fingers and your thumb. And then you start squeezing like this, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze different parts for one minute and then move to the other one. So all of these techniques can take just five minutes. You can do it outside of your solo practice. Like you can just, you just woke up and, like during your day, any time during the day, you can just take five minutes to massage your testicles. This will boost your testosterone levels. Your sperm production will increase. It's very good. And you can do these things when with one hand you're masturbating and the other hand you can do some testicle massage if you're losing your erection, okay? It's a good combo. Just be careful not to come over the top, the top of the roof and just uh, come. So, all right. Any other questions or any questions about what I just talked we, about? We do have a one. Uh, so R.I. had asked how to masturbate without ejaculation, but I feel like that's literally what we gone over, We went over just barely with the Yeah, tantric. just now. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Lionel asks, do you think size matters during sex? Not at all. I'm just, I'm just being very serious here. Um, <laughs> look, um, of course, there are techniques to increase your penis size, okay? 
you can take that path, but it's a lot of time and effort. Okay. You can take that time and effort, I think, and put it into controlling your ejaculation, having orgasms without ejaculation, and then you can satisfy your woman much more, much more. Okay. Um, and I'll tell you what, in Tantra, even a half erected penis inside her can give her an orgasm. I had this experience many times because I'm tired or something. I'm still inside her. It's very pleasurable. And she can have an orgasm because I sent her energy. There's some magic going on. There's so much pleasure. And it's after 40 minutes of intercourse. There are some reasons, okay? And my penis is fully, not fully erected. And I'm not moving so much as well. I can just stop. Like there's techniques like Caressa. So all these movies, pornographic movies in our minds are just telling us other ways, but that's not what sex is all about. And I think, again, I'm going to come back to the first point. It's a kind of conspiracy to make us come more and become not so strong. Okay. So of course the real trouble here is to find such a partner, unfortunately, because so many women are conditioned in this way as well. Like they're conditioned by porn. Most of them, they don't watch porn, but their boyfriends or husbands do. So they think that this is the right way or this is the good way to have sex. And, you know, so delete all those movies from your mind, brother. This is really key. Stop watching porn. That's really helpful for Tantra. And so, yeah, let's go on with another question or if this person is not satisfied with the answer. Very good. Um, anyone want to come online or type some in chat? We can go. Uh, any guys, yeah, I get it. any guys, sorry, sorry. Any guys who asked question before, they can ask a second, third question. That's totally fine. Hey, so this is Elias again. Uh, I'm pretty mm. new on this journey, uh, yeah. with my sexual experience, but uh, that's a very foreign concept you're explaining to me because I'm really American. Uh, orgasm without ejaculation. Like my, my brain has a hard time wrapping around what you're talking about is awesome if i can orgasm without uh i guess premature ejaculating it's it's very difficult to understand all right elias can i coach you for a while like can you stay with me for 10 20 minutes sure okay so um i'll tell you what okay this idea is too much idealized for you. Like it's too difficult. It's almost impossible. So forget about it. Okay. You don't need to have orgasm without ejaculation. Maybe, just maybe, you can have some orgasmic sensations or orgasmic feelings without ejaculation. That's wonderful. That's great. Okay. And then if you choose to come in the end, you just do it. That's your choice. That's your conscious choice. Okay. And then I would experiment, just want you to experiment with like, a, you don't have to answer this because now everybody's watching us, but how often do you ejaculate? So recently I've cut back probably about maybe like twice, three times, just because life's busy and I just got to head out the door, you know, type of stuff. Two, three times in a week or a month? Week. Weak. That's nice. Okay. So keep your mic open. Let's just keep going. Okay. So th is this your regular? Is it your average? Uh, no. Sometimes I can go a whole week and maybe do it once just because my okay. mind's occupied with other, other things. Okay. Okay. Cool. So how do you feel? Do you feel a difference when you, when you educate once a week? Uh, I actually do. Uh, my mind, I feel clearer. Uh, I feel uh -huh. strong at the gym. I feel more confident at work. Yeah. Like my mind's not obsessing over sex, even though I do think about sex whenever I see an attractive woman. But okay. it's not so dominant as it used to be. Okay. For example, I would encourage you to do this for 14 days. Count every day. Like look back. When, when was the last time you ejaculated? Yesterday, three days ago, today. From that day, start counting 24 hours. And 24 multiplied by 14 and then on that day, before you ejaculate, you just write down how you feel. Keep a journal, okay? okay. Like you, you, just, you just told me that you feel um, stronger in the gym. Your mind is more clear. You feel more confident. What else? 
Uh, yeah, I just feel I feel more uh, confident at work. Ah. And, and you also said you're something like more productive with your mind. Yes, yes, okay. I'm, I'm I'm more creative actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your work, by the way? It's pretty boring at the moment. I'm a case manager for uh, U.S. Customs. Sorry, what manager? I'm a case manager for uh, immigration, U.S. Customs. Ah, you're like that. You studied law or something? Yeah. Uh, okay. It's a lot of things. <laughs> okay, so you need a lot of memory, right? Your brain needs to be like an elephant Massive. memory. Massive. A lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah. A lot of stuff. So yeah. The, so one of the best things, just try with this. You know, like like there is a concept in ancient India. How old are you, by the way? I'm actually uh, I'm 40. Okay, you look much younger. Yeah. I would say 25. I'm serious. That's what I tell the women. <laughs> cool, cool. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> just try, man. Just try to double or triple that. And just experiment with it. It's your life. You will decide what kind of life you want to live. And if you mm -hmm. need help or support, I'm here. You know, like this is what I do. I make sure that you reach your goals. Awesome. But that's your goals. And nothing should be dogma. You know, like I'm just talking about some theory here. And you need to experiment with that. You need to try if it's really working or not. And how much you're benefiting. And do you want these benefits? Definitely. Well, that's why I'm here. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool, bro. So thanks for sharing. Not a problem. Yeah. Do we have more questions? Awesome. Um, we Go don't ahead. have any in wait, chat. Wait. wait, wait. Maybe. Sorry. Are we done? Uh, if you would like to be done, or. No, no. I mean. No. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That was very helpful. All right. Could you cool. share with me? I, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Andre. I wanted to be. I wanted this to be a li little bit like a actual session. So, right. Elias. Esteban, I like your surname, by the way, um, because it's my one of my child childhood heroes. Where are you <laughs> yeah, from? Where are you uh, from? I'm I'm from the U.S., but uh, if you're talking about the prophet, uh, yeah, yeah, I was named after him too. So yeah, well, are you you have Portuguese or Spanish roots, something like that? Spanish from Spain. Spanish, yeah. Okay, Esteban, I would like to connect with you after this. You know, like if you want, awesome. all right, just type me a message. So Andre, go ahead. Yes. Um, so we do have a question from Nirmala and they ask a pretty interesting question. So they say, how do you tune to a woman's frequency to open the conversation? Um, ask again, please. How do you tune to a woman's frequency and then to open a conversation? How do you open, a, how do you attune to a woman's frequency and then open a conversation? Yeah. <laughs> you do hocus pocus, abracadabra, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, it depends on the situation, you know, like, are you in a bar? Are you sitting in the same, on the same sofa? Are you, you just met her on the streets? You know, like, it depends. Um, but first, you need to be aware of your own energy, brother. Like, whatever you want to do with women, like, attune to her energy, move her energy, open her energy, give her energetic orgasms, or what, whatever, or just just flirt with her, just date with her, or just you want to be a successful person dating, you know, like you want to approach beautiful girls. Whatever your goal is in relationships, in dating, Tantra can help you, first of all, okay? It transformed my life completely. Like my self-confidence is way better than my self-confidence before I started Tantra, okay? Because I know that I can satisfy that woman in that, okay? So that's one thing. And the second thing, is uh, you need to understand your own energy. You need to connect with your own energy and then move your energy. And some girls, if they're sensitive enough, they are like, what are you doing to me? You know, like most of the time during sex. Okay, during sex, that's a very deep connection. And I can feel her, like our energy bodies become just one energy body. Now, whatever I initiate, this can trigger something in her, especially if she's passive type of woman. And I'm more active in that state. But some women will be more active than their passive, even more than you. And they will even can trigger an education. You know, like every woman is different. Every relationship is different. But even without sex, um, some women can feel the energy. 
You know, like, and one of the favorite things I like to do is sit down with a girl and hold her hands and close eyes and do a meditation and circulate the energy. I can feel her energy. She can feel my energy. There's no pressure. It's just like a game or it's a way to approach a woman. Of course, do it ethically, you know, like don't abuse this technique, but just offer her like, you know what? I just want to get to know your energy. Can you just sit down with me here? Like there could be people around, you know, like they can be watched. You're not going to rape her. Just sit with her and hold your palms. The palms should touch each other, not just with the fingers, but the palms should touch each other. Through the palms, the energy transfer is complete. And just close your eyes and just feel her. You don't have to be a master in Kundalini yoga. You can just feel her energy. And, and this can arouse you very much. And you can even get erection. And that's fine. And just be cool with it and observe it. So you're doing already going stepping into the Tantra with this practice with her. And then you can do it after sex. And if you haven't ejaculated, it will be an amazing energy. This is one of the beautiful recommendations in Tantra. If you have never done it, at least try to have a sexual experience with a woman, with your girlfriend. It could be anyone, like your wife. But don't ejaculate in the end. Just walk away. Just sit down and do meditation, take a shower, I don't know. After half an hour, you could come back and have more sex. And some of them love it, you know, like because it's like a very romantic, long... They love that the man doesn't, after sex, just turn around in the bed and sleep. You're, after sex, you're still loving her. You're still full of energy. You can appreciate her beauty, you know? So there are a lot of this kind of approaches in Tantra as well. Very good. Um, Cell asks a question. It's, he says, depending on your age, is there a number of days we should go without ejaculation? Depending on what? Your age. Yeah, the Taoist masters have some formulas. But those formulas, I, don't, I didn't really pay attention a lot because in Tantra, we have higher uh, goals. In, there's a philosophical difference between Tao and Tantra. And in Tantric way, uh, is more about less ejaculation because it's more spiritual. The Taoist Chinese masters, they are more about power, more money, want to have a child when they're 60 years old, have tens of grandchildren, you know, like very uh, low chakra oriented. I'm not uh, discrediting it. I also love this kind of approach. But Tantra is more going to spiritual world completely and enlightenment. So you don't ejaculate unless you want to have a child. So what's the middle way between these two? Um, I would say ejaculate as much as often as your age, ideally. I know it's a hard work for many of you. It will drive you crazy. But if you do the sublimation as well, you move the energy. So, okay, you can do my technique that I'm teaching. It's number one and easiest technique, but you can do other things as well, like um, do spiritual dance or spiritual meditation, prayer, gratitude, or uh, fasting, or uh, very intense gym, or very intense studying, or very intense creation of something. Um, use that energy in your higher centers so that this energy will not drive you completely crazy and nuts with getting horny you know but ideally if you are 25 years old ejaculate every 25 days if you are 40 years old ejaculate every 40 days and don't try to get there at once maybe you can only 10 percent of men can do it probably you will have to take six months to one year minimum to reach that level and that's fine tantra is a long run guys it's like a it's a huge investment for your life okay change your mindset it's like have you read the rich dad poor dad like robert kiyosaki it, you don't get rich in one day or one week or one month you get rich in a lifetime you know like it's a journey it takes a long, long time tantra is the same very good um atul asks any particular food to consume every day for good sex like dry fruits vegetables any recommendations oh my god you're opening the pandora's box brother it's like I'm not going to talk about it. Even in my ebook, I don't talk much about it because it's a, it's a very personal subject, I think. Um, and information and knowledge is changing every day. Believe it or not, I recently quitted coffee and I feel amazing. And all caffeine. I stopped all caffeine and I feel much better. And also I'm eating more fruits. And that's really super helpful. And it's like a beautiful hack that I never thought is free. you know. So... But whatever you're eating, eat 
pure. If you are eating vegetables, not genetically modified, not uh, oil fried, not uh, preservatives, you know, like toxic chemicals in it, eat pure and eat um, uh, grass fat if you're eating meat, you know, like an organic yogurt and, you know, like whatnot. This is the simplest solution, uh, not solution, sorry, advice that I could give. It's a very deep subject. Very good. Um, R.I. asks, can women sense semen retention? Yes, definitely. They smell sperm from your body. And they feel your magnetism, you know, like this energy thing. You become more masculine. You become more plus. And they feel it. And you will also start feeling, oh, this woman, I feel less energy from her, less feminine energy from her. And this woman, I feel more feminine energy from her. And this woman, I can have an orgasm even without touching her. The, I, I had one woman in my life like that, actually a couple of them. Like they could make me, give me an orgasm with just hugging me, you know, like actual hugging, just putting her hand on my pants and I start shaking, you know, like having orgasm. So short answer, yes. Very good. Um, Soth asks, can you use testosterone boosting herbs like ashwagandha, Korean ginseng, horny goat weed, tribulus, etc., as a Viagra substitute by multi-dosing before a big night? or if you're tired? Well, when you say aphrodisiacs, aphrodisiac is a really good one. Like, um, I'm really happy with it. I think it's a very good formulation. So try that one. Um, but also the other aphrodisiacs, first of all, you need to try and see if they work with you. Everybody can react differently to different uh, herbs. Just before sex, um, you can try things like pomegranate juice. Shizandra berry is very good in Afrodi. Shizandra berry, or take Afrodi, or use Shizandra berry. And uh, pomegranate, pomegranate juice, mix it with watermelon juice, for example. These two things will increase your blood flow like crazy. So you will have a very strong erection based on this. And of course, a good strong erection will help you with lasting longer as well. And if you want to add to the mix, you could eat some pistachios, for example, right before sex, like or half an hour before sex. All these things like chisandra berry, pomegranate, watermelon, pistachios, they are very good for blood circulation. Of course, if you want some uh, testosterone boosting thing, you know, like you can take some ginseng. I like very much uh, Korean ginseng. You should take Afrodi again. Tonkat Ali is in Afrodi. It works for that function. So yeah, next question, please. Yeah, I'm Lee very Nell happy with your questions. <laughs> yeah, they're good. Um, how to have multiple orgasms and have sex again right after ejaculation? Um, multiple orgasms, meaning, brother, uh, you are not ejaculating and having one orgasm after one orgasm after one orgasm after, but it's not like the typical orgasm again. Like I said, it's 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 not like. Uh, what's in your mind. It's a different type of multi-orgasmic, as I just explained. It can be very orgasmic feelings. It can be, of course, the energy can shoot up to your body as well. Like you're like the same intensity like, oh, outside and oh, it's inside and you didn't lose your sperm. And maybe you, 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 got, you, you couldn't function anymore like after five, 10 seconds, uh, oh, what was that? And you come back, okay, you still have erection and you can still continue having sex. And after one or two minutes or five minutes, have another one, maybe similar, maybe in a different way, maybe the same. And then after five, 10 minutes or one minute, have another one like that. And at some point, finish, finish with ejaculation. Ideally, don't ejaculate and just finish it in a meditative way, in a spiritual way or energetic way, whatever, however you want to feel like. But sex in Tantra is completely counterintuitive, brother counterintuitive it's very opposing to what you already know so uh, after ejaculation you that's you maybe you if, if you if you're 17 years old or 15 years old or 19 years old and you have crazy energy like you're a super fit muscular guy and then you ejaculate and then your erection is still there and you keep fucking that's very very rare and it's like you don't need to have that we do things in a different way here do you know the Chinese fingers? 
go and Google what's the Chinese finger puzzle, okay? You need to think the opposite of what you have been thinking. You need to relax to be able to achieve the goal here. So sometimes stretching the muscle is necessary. Sometimes you got to completely relax that part, especially your prostate. Next. Very good. Yeah, uh, good. Vin was mentioning and kind of conversing with Farhan. He talked about how he did a 210-day semen retention, uh, no Woo! approach anxiety from it. And uh, yeah, Farhan asked if he had a wet dream. And he said, yeah, about like 150 days in. And uh, then Farhan mentioned sublimation and how that is very helpful in avoiding yeah. the nocturnal emission. Yeah. So in that case, your uh, sperm retention is 150 days. And, uh, and sometimes like we can lose some sperm when we are not even aware. Um, so if you masturbate it in this time frame or had sex, sometimes if your prostate is weak, you lose some sperm. Okay. So that's not typical ejaculation, but you might be still using your uh, sperm. And then you go, your energy go, level goes down. Like you're not feeling like a superhero anymore or something like that. Uh, I did. What, what did he say? I missed that chat message. Um, about which? What's the last chat, he, chat message? Yeah. So uh, he mentioned that uh, he, of course, did do like a 90 day one and it was great. Um, uh -huh. Farhan was really just mentioning how sublimation will help. Yeah. Okay. That's so a real question. Don't... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he's talking about uh, this Kundalini yoga technique for sublimation, which uh, helps you sublime the energy very effectively. And if you do that before sleeping, that will help you very much with wet dreams because wet dreams is a trouble along the way, uh, not for all people, but for some people. And especially if you are trying to break world record with this, you know, like 20 days, 40 days, 30 days, whatever you're challenging yourself with, at some point you can have a wet dream. So because your body is unconscious and your brain is telling you, I need this, I want this, I'm used to this, your animal brain, okay? So we have a higher brain and lower brain, uh, our um, ancient brain, okay? So, and that, because that's used to it. So you got to kind of, become conscious while you're sleeping and or move the energy upwards before sleeping so that there is not enough energy to trigger ejaculation or to see uh, erotic dreams. If you move the energy upwards, you can do, for example, some gratitude work. You can do some prayer or meditation or with music meditation. Do something or some, if you know some yoga, for example, you can do some reverse asanas like headstand or shoulder stand. The handstand doesn't work. You need to stay in that pose two, three, five minutes, and then it will move the energy. And if you combine it with this technique, the Udhyana Banda, by the way, its name is, it's a little bit complicated Sanskrit name. Um, so all these techniques before bed will uh, make you clean from wet dreams. Well, that's very interesting. Um, it looks like that's, all the questions so far. Does anyone want to come on video, uh, unmute themselves, raise your hand, whatever you want to do? Yeah, let's take next question by um, raising hand and coming to camera. I have one question. Just... Hello, Lionel. Yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to know, I write it, but uh, how do you do like some sexual transmutation like using your your sperm to like work on something focus on something how do you like you know use from from your your sperm in order to to focus yeah uh, transmutation you said right yes okay keep, keep your mic open please uh let's have a conversation so transmutation is uh, what i ex explained previously is the trans um like transformation of energy. Um, the ancient alchemists, they were making, supposedly, they were making gold out of iron. So they take a mineral or an element that is not so rare and they turn it into something more rare. Our body can do it as well. Our sexual energy is abundant. All around us, 
all people, all media, all Instagram, everywhere is full with sexual energy, okay? Yes. Right. So we have a lot of, we can explain many times, millions, billions of sperms, it's abundant. So you take that energy in certain ways with a know-how, you, you sublime it or you transmute it to higher centers and it can go to your brain as well, of course. And then you can think clearly, you can have better ideas, you can have uh, more concentration, more focus, more creativity, more productivity. And these things, as Farhan said, they're written in the tradition. If you, if you, the first book ever written about yoga is called Yoga Sutras, okay? It's called by a man called Patanjali, 2,500 years ago. You, you, sorry, you say yoga? Sutras, Yoga Sutras. Okay, Sutras. S-U-T-R-A-S, -S. okay? So in this book, this man who is just transferring all the yogic wisdom before him that was just oral, and he just put it onto paper or whatever the form was there at that point. Um, so, and he mentions this Brahmacharya. Brahma is a, a divine energy in you and Acharya is the control of it. So this is one of the golden rules or golden recommendations. So if you want to do a good yoga, but by the way, yoga is not just flexing and being like a monkey. You know, like yoga is very much about concentration, um, consciousness, moving your energy and changing your life, changing your character through this work. It's a lot of inner work there, okay? So if you want to be successful in that, you got to keep your Brahmacharya. And the Indians, they understood it. Most of them, the yogis, they say, okay, this is celibacy. You got to be celibate. You cannot have sex. You cannot get married. But they integrate it into their culture as brahmacharis. And these are people, student, students who are not having sex, not having partners, not having masturbation until they are 25 years old or something like that, maybe 22 or 21. And they study and study and study. And then they become doctors, lawyers, you know, like scientists, engineers, musicians, maybe, I don't know. And they become super successful in their life. Isaac Newton was a brahmachari. He never got married, for example. So Isaac? Isaac Newton, ph physicist, ah, yeah. British, yeah. And Einstein, when he was young, he came up with this theory of relativity and then he got married. And then, you know, when he was old, he was much more experienced, but he couldn't come up with such a bright idea again because of this youthfulness energy. It's nurturing your brain, man. It's like, it's a food for your mind. But what I want to know is, do you still have to do those, these exercises where you like, like you breathe and you put it into your mind or is it just naturally gonna uh, like transfer into your, you know, your focus and your, your productivity, you know, just by doing no, no sex, no, no masturbation. I'll tell you a story from the karate tradition, okay? There's a student, like he's crazy. He wants to be the best Japanese karate fighter. He goes to the best school and the best master. And he says, how long does it take for me to get the number one in Japan? And he says, 10 years. Okay. But if I put double effort of all the rest of your students, you know, like I, if they work four hours, I will work eight hours. If they work 10 hours, I'll do 20. How long it will take? And he says, 20 years. He says, are you crazy? I'm telling that I'm going to practice more, but the time is getting longer for me to be the best karate guy in Japan. And he says, like, if I never sleep, you know, like, what will happen? And I do 24 hours just practice. And then he says, 30 years. And then he says, why? And the master says, because if you put one of your eye to where you want to achieve, you will have only one eye left to see the road that's going there. So, <laughs> with all the respect brother you are thinking a little bit too much far ahead and this is a little bit irrelevant for you at this time i don't know i haven't coached you i don't know where you are at ex exactly but don't worry so much about this okay this is a little bit too much theory maybe you will maybe you won't everybody is unique some guys are more strong with their muscles some guys are more strong with their mind or become aware of energy some guys are both or some guys maybe not having both of them. So depends on what's your type. One way of going is better for you. Ideally combine the energetic and mental work with muscle and more grounded work. 
okay? And maybe one day you can only do with your mind. And I believe you can. Because that's what the masters are doing. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Very so good. is that satisfying you? Yeah, I, I, uh, I think the, because you you told maybe you told about how to like um, transfer your energy. Yes, I never really understood. Okay, like, how yeah. you can? Yeah, that makes sense. Of course, um, because it's something new for you. You haven't experienced it yet. Mm -hmm. um, First, you need to be aware of the energy before you can do anything about it. I mean, sometimes spontaneously energy can move upwards, but you have to develop a certain awareness, maybe slowly, maybe quickly, it depends again, many factors, but first you need to be aware and then you can move it up. Or you do this technique. <laughs> okay, this technique is, for example, is a vacuum technique. Okay, I will talk about it. Um, you exhale completely your lungs, completely. There's no air left. So the diaphragm muscle completely goes up and this is, and your abdominal area becomes completely hollow. It goes inside. And this is creating kind of a vacuum. Like, it's like a physical fact, okay? In physics, why we do it with the pipe? <laughs> you know, it's the same principle. You, energy is vacuums. And if you do it again and again, and again, and again, like 15 times, 20 times, every day for 15 days, 20 days, at some point, something starts moving, okay? And then during sex or your solo practice, you are bringing your awareness. Where is the energy? What do I feel? Where? Or I can teach you some certain practices, like put your hand here, like next to your palm, next to your, your put your palm next to your face, and try to feel some energy in your cheek. Maybe you will feel only some heat. That's fine. Just try to feel. Touch a little bit more, a little, little bit less. Play with it. And sometimes, at some point, you can start feeling some energy. Or you can just put your palms like this. Just like this. If you just relax. Relax your palms. Just maybe move a little bit up and down. It's better if you do it in front of your belly. And then at some point, if you're really focused, you will feel some energy. So there are ways to attune your mind to energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great questions, man. Great questions. I'm so happy from everyone. So. Yeah, we, um, we currently don't have any other questions in chat. If anyone else wants to come on ask a question to Fati. Let's, let's do it. One of them just came up. Can we recover? Can we read the rest of the question? Oh, yes. Yeah. Can we recover the energy that was lost through ejaculation? Quite difficult. I mean, almost impossible. I mean, of course, just one ejaculation maybe doesn't matter so much, especially if you're 20, if you're in your 20s, let's say. Okay. Um, I mean, you can eat great food. You can have amazing food supplements, aphrodisiacs and whatnot. You can reduce the effect of losing that energy. Um, of course, like, Let's say, let's say that you ejaculated every day for a week and then you decided not to come and you didn't come for 40 days. You will feel much stronger than before you have your first ejaculation in that week because you, re you recovered that energy, you accumulated that energy, okay? Because what's happening meanwhile is your body is creating sperms, okay? Like 500,000 sperms a day, okay? 6,000, 650,000 sperms the next day, you know, like, and every day, certain amount of sperm is being produced. And then they accumulate it. And then they're like, you know, like these testicles are too much for us. And like, too, we need to come out of here. And then they want to ejaculate. And if you don't do that, 
you will feel this pressure, you know, like, and if you ejaculate, you will not have so many sperms again. So that pressure will be lower, like, and you ejaculate again, and it will be even weaker fire. Like, and then some days you will feel like shit, you know, like, uh, uh, what's going on? Who am I? You know, like, you know, like, do I speak English? Like, what do I study? Oh, oh, I study neuroscience, right? Like, you know, like, whatever it is, you know, like, we can completely lose your mental performance if it's too much for some people. I'm not saying all, but anybody can observe the effects of this ejaculation frequency. Just do your own experiments, man. Like, I really encourage everyone to experiment whatever they want to experiment that they heard tonight, especially this one. Just do it. You will not lose anything. And then it will be your experience. And then you will come up with, oh, I did this and, you know, it works or it doesn't work. Bye. I don't like Tantra. That's fair. You just tried it. You see that there's no effects. Assuming, assuming that you have done it in the correct, correct scientific method. Okay. Next question. Yeah, I have a question. Um, Go ahead. So we've had a few people ask questions um, regarding like prostate inflammation within the academy and stuff. So prostatitis, the prostate being inflamed. Um, mm -hmm. what, what do you believe are the causes for this? Like as men age, cause it's, it seems like an epidemic almost to some degree. Mm -hmm. And then how do you treat that? Okay, first of all, let me give uh, like a disclaimer. I am not a medical doctor, of course. You know, like I, if you have, if you guys have these kind of problems, first you need to go to a urologist and, you know, do your regular checks. Um, and your doctor will advise you to ejaculate often. That's a very common medical advice. And uh, that is, I would say yes and no for that. Yes, because if, you're not doing any tantra, any yoga, any sublimation of the energy, any movement of the energy. And if you don't ejaculate, yes, that's not very good because it's like a pond, like a stable water and bacteria will start growing there. It's like gonna be moldy and whatnot. Um, but if you move the energy, it's like a river of water. And then it's okay that you don't ejaculate 100 days, 200 days, whatever. And uh, so, yeah. That's, that's why it's no, you know, like if you're tantric, you don't have to follow that advice. Um, I believe that tantra can heal many diseases in your body uh, because you will feel a lot of good hormones if you have a solo practice or sex and you didn't come. Like even if you come, it's very, it feels very good, right? Our brain chemistry changes and like serotonin is there, you know, like we become more happy. And and on top of that, add this feeling that you didn't lose your energy, you're still very vital and um, energetic. It's even double folding and trifolding this effect. And this is also your prostate is benefiting too. And you can do some prostate massage as well. Okay. Um, prostate massage is something very tender, tender, sorry. <laughs> tender, I said. Tender and it's a sensitive subject and you might have some blockage around it and that's fine. Don't push or don't force yourself, but uh, just research about it. And if when the time, time is right, just be open-minded, do an experiment with it. Um, I'm talking about internal <clears throat> anal stimulation, you know, like you put your finger or a toy or a special device to stimulate your <clears throat> prostate or a beautiful uh, version of it is that you go to this special beautiful woman at tantric massage therapist and she will do it for you. And because she's also experienced, she will do, ideally, hopefully, she will do it in a nice way. She, her fingers will be short. She's not going to hurt or bleed you, you know, like she's not gonna hurt you. Um, so make sure that she's qualified and you can have a prostate massage from her. <clears throat> if you keep it regularly, or if you start having some prostate orgasms, for example, and it's something very common in Tantra, uh, maybe you heard about G-spot orgasm, right? In a woman. So when we are a fetus, like in the mother's room, the first, I guess, eight or 12 weeks, I'm not sure, uh, the baby has no gender. <clears throat> baby is genderless. <clears throat> Actually, some people say that we are all women because then, <clears throat> I don't remember why they say it, but at some point, the clitoris becomes clitoris and the same 
piece becomes a penis. So a clitoris is a mini penis. So <clears throat> genital structure is the same, in fact. So if they have a G spot, we have a P spot. Okay, that's the prostate spot. And even there's prosthetic urethra, utricle, so prosthetic utricle inside our prostate, a mini point, a mini gland inside the prostate that <clears throat> triggers the ejaculation. So the sperm is kept there during sex when you're aroused. <clears throat> and if you don't ejaculate through your gland, penis gland, this energy, the sperm here will start stimulating your prostate. So you can have a prostate orgasm and ejaculate, or if you can manage the energy, you can have this orgasm. Oh, it feels amazingly good. And you don't, and you can keep going like that. Okay. So <clears throat> that's how it is connected. And this, I, I believe, is healing. <clears throat> There's not much scientific research about tantric guys. You know, like, because there are not so many of us and the scientific community is not open-minded for these things yet. Hopefully in 20, 30 years, there will be more research on this. That's awesome. Um, Soth asks a very interesting question. He says, yeah. if a man has a vasectomy, he will not lose sperm in ejaculation, but yeah. he can still lose energy straight after ejaculation. Why is this? <clears throat> Sorry, what's the last word? What is um, this? Yeah, so he says, if a man has a vasectomy, he will not lose <laughs> sperm, but he can still lose energy after yeah. orgasm. Why is this? Because the energy of that sperm exploded and it's just gone somewhere outside of you. It bursted chaotically. You didn't, you didn't have sperm, you didn't use it. You didn't transform it or send it upwards. You had this um, prosthetic uh, spasms, full on, not prosthetic orgasm. So if some people, by the way, some men with vasectomy, they don't lose the energy. I heard uh, one of my students, he explained it like this. So it depends also, again, from one man to man. Uh, but he was also saying that he has two different types of orgasms. And in one type, he also loses energy. So he was already a little bit multi-orgasmic, maybe already multi-orgasmic. So the question here is, I think this, the, vasect the guys with vasectomy, they need to follow a little bit different path, a little bit different version of Tantra to move the energy up. But the same principles kind of still are valid. As from this example, like two of these guys that I know, when they ejaculate in a certain way, they lose the energy. So the sperm doesn't cross that uh, gland, that tube, and it goes back to the uh, testicles. So probably you're losing less energy. So it's kind of, you're saving whatever you can in this way, but you can't continue sex and that's what matters. You have to give up your tantra, uh, your partner maybe didn't have an orgasm and she's a little bit disappointed. So the key point here is to last longer. And so if you learn this methodology, so, uh, you can have longer sex. And you can have different experiences. And that's what matters. Of course, the energy level matters too. So understand and identify what happens and how you achieve to that state where you lose your energy and avoid it, for example, for a certain amount of time. This is, this is the advice for this kind of people, for this uh, man with vasectomy. Yeah, go ahead. Very good. Um, that's, that's all we've got right now. Okay, so time is almost over. I just want to talk thing and say thank you for everyone who joined tonight. And uh, anybody who can, um, okay, can, can we show the last slides, Andre, please? Yeah. And anybody, anybody who direct message me, I will send them a full version of my ebook, which is sold for $19. You're gonna get it for free if you DM me. You're gonna get that. You can use, you can email me, you can WhatsApp me, you can Skype me. Um, you know, or just click this link, like um, Imran will inform everybody or Andre will do something about it. So thanks for joining. And by the way, I also promised in my uh, teaser that if you um, contact me again, I will give you a coupon code that will give you the video course for half price. It's almost, uh, uh, it's very similar to what you have in the library, just a little bit more bonuses. So you can just go to the library as well of AfroD and watch all my videos. So Very thanks good. for joining again. If anybody wants to say something like or ask another question, I'm still here. Awesome. Um, yeah, so 
Thanks, Fatih. I have posted um, all the e links in the chat so people can follow those and uh, follow you, reach out to you on WhatsApp, Skype, email, all of those uh, things. Um, what I do want to mention is Imran had started up our Google page, so a Google review for AfroD. So I will post that link in the chat as well right now. Yeah, you can reach out uh, to Fati on Instagram, Leonel. You know. I didn't. I didn't give my Instagram account here. Uh, it's uh, Fati Kecelioglu. If, if you don't prefer WhatsApp and Instagram, there. There. maybe I will type it I, to you right now. I put it in chat. So it's there. Yeah. Now. It's there. Yeah. So um, I just posted um, the link to our Google reviews page at AfroD. Um, that will be pretty awesome if you guys can give us your testimonial on your essential, you know, your results that you've got from AfroD. Google is going to be our main go-to to get our testimonials in. And it really helps us all out a lot so we can continue to provide these webinars for everyone. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I've really got. I will go ahead and just sign off on the recording. And then if anyone wants to come on and actually ask more questions, then you can do so privately. But once again, thanks everyone for joining. Thanks for your participation. We'll talk.